All right. So, yeah, just, I mean, I wanted to say Happy New Year, of course, and so might as well record that. And um, so I think the last meeting that I got on, we talked about someone had uh, contributed a few different features to the wallet. Um, and so, though, so, you know, we always go through a lot of testing when we get uh, updates. So we integrated those updates and we tested a lot of things and we actually found that we needed to disable the um, uh, couple of the features. We effectively got TLS uh, connections, so private encrypted connections that are working. Um, and then the others we disabled and the developer who contributed contributed them uh, hasn't had a chance to respond or look at them so we're not, you know we can go back and we can fix those when we have time and, and get them back in but we did a bunch of testing on everything and and currently we got ls out of that work um as everyone knows you know i was working i was working to try and get the uh defi in shape and ready for mainnet and then there were other things going on and we had login in progress which is uh actually working to some degree but i think uh, dude's on the call he's working on some of the server side of things so i don't know where that is but i think the general login on the client is there in native um so rather than just kind of pick off little features what's going on obviously we didn't do a release for the end of last year with the tls and part of the reason is you know we took in these changes for uh, the tls the encrypted wallet the faster z syncing and these things and then of course we went through all of our testing before even going out to the community testing and we ran into issues on those and so we pulled things out and changed things and and removed many of those things so we have the auto bootstrap on deck we have tls connections on deck we have the auto zcash parameter download on deck and we have a number of um hardening a lot of hardening work and a lot of work actually to get not just DeFi, but meaningful DeFi. and even though i said that i wasn't going to I did start spending time on the um, uh, Ethereum contracts and working to get those hardened and in shape and ready to go. And we also uh, forked for development, assuming that you know we will work on a pull request at some point. But we might; it's open source, so we'll decide when we uh, when we get there. But we did fork and. Um, and work on the liquidity web extension wallet and uh, some of us i was involved in doing that and and was able to get um kind of a most of the framework in place for plugging in uh support for varus does like a metamask style um interaction with websites and the login that we have on native we expect to be able to have there um, I've since uh, I was working a little bit with Michael Toot Jr. over the break, and and so he's going to be working on that. He's got a number of other things going on, but we're not. I don't think we're that far from having support a nice web extension that is really nice, actually. Um, quality supports uh, Bitcoin, Polygon, uh, Near. Um, Arbitrum directly, Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin Cash. Um, let me see, actually, I have it. Uh, oh. It supports a number of different networks. Um, Solana, and they do swaps um, as part of the web extension, actually. And they have a, a plug-in model that... Um, we're pretty far along on supporting and it's open source and i've been using it the development version that we're working on for a while it's it's nice and 
And so we also, uh, I also took a little bit of time to redo some of our server side functionality. So um, I'm not, I, I'm going to get a little technical just really quickly so people will understand. So the way that we do our functionality for Varus, um, all of the functions of the core protocol, first they're in the protocol through the daemon, which is also what people think of as Cly wallet, currently a full node. Um, and that includes basically all of the functionality exposed in the protocol. And then for light mode, we use Electrum servers and uh, an updated um, kind of scalability updated modified version of Light Wallet D, Z, uh, zero knowledge transactions. And, you know, the plan to have ID support was to extend, which we already did, in fact, um, Light Wallet D to support IDs. And in looking at this, extension and the way that they're doing things and the way that other people, other projects, Bitcoin um, and Komodo and others have been doing some of this functionality. It's kind of a mix of all these things. And, you know, there's this server, Bitcoin D RPC, which people are using for the Insight Explorer and they're using for, for these different uh, functions. But in fact, Bitcoin D RPC was kind of for some of the modifications that I recently made was kind of like uh and it's not like a big deal the modifications it was basically this interface to a node and its wallet functions and other things and then there's another server on top of that bitcore um moto derived and that was kind of like a, a filter and a cache that allowed the Bitcoin DRPC to be protected from using the wallet functions and then exposed. And so it's, it's really interesting that all of these different servers and pieces of software even exist because they're all kind of trying to do similar things and, and a lot of them are really kind of doing the same thing. And so Electrum has this terrible interface that doesn't map to the way that anyone does um, smart transactions at all. It only maps to a very specific um bitcoin way of looking at things that limits itself to all just the specific existing bitcoin um functions so what i did was i extended the first the bitcoin drpc to include all of the various um apis that do not affect wallet or depend on a wallet or control a node and those are the things that are really exposed through Electromax or through Light Wallet D or through all these other random, you know, server attachments on top of it. Um, now we just have the ability to access APIs through the daemon with this intermediate server that doesn't require or give access to any wallet functions. It can include ID lookups, it can include all these different things. And then we have a version that can include, and, and we did, you know, I did kind of a comprehensive, it supports all APIs that do not um, require the wallet or control the wallet or control the node. And so that means that with that in front of a node, you know, we can do something much better than Electrum or Light Wallet D or any of these. And then when we cover that with this caching uh, an evolved kind of caching API, we could probably get rid of any dependency on Electrum. We could simplify our stack and it would effectively be, you know, the Varus, um, what might be like the Web3 API. And at first we can expose this for our applications. And, you know, there's absolutely no reason at all that this API couldn't turn into something that would be that could have infura business models behind it that kind of thing but of course if if we or anyone ever does something like that it'd be nice to make it payable with crypto because all of our decentralized bridges are too so um so that's been work going on and where are we so uh 
I did get a lot of hardening work. I would say all of the necessary hardening work, although it needs to get some uh, needs to get some some work still on it. There are a couple of reasons into the contracts, into the Ethereum contracts. Um, we did get a lot of progress on the forked web extension, and I'm hoping that we're going to have one to use just for the community to use with you know Varus in it in the not too distant future, um, hopefully in weeks. Uh, and right now I've got the uh, ability to, so as people have probably noticed, if you've been using testnet, you know, going between chains, you can send easily between chains and you can now import and export IDs between chains, but you can't really import and export currency definitions between chains, which, you know, so when you make a bridge to a new chain, only the currencies that were defined in that bridge can go back and forth. And, uh, and there isn't really a way to make multiple bridges. So you can't really extend the number of currencies. And so I've gotten that um, in shape and in the progress I'm working on, you know, getting all of that hardened and it isn't just DeFi on one chain because if we're going to have the ETH bridge, which I think we either need the ETH bridge or we need, we've already talked, we've talked about uh, like a stable coin mapped bridge um, as well. So we can do both stable coins and we can do um, mapped bridge to a centralized party that could expose various currencies, for example, through their, centralized bridge that's also but uh, but you know when we get DeFi and when we get um the amms to mainnet which is now what i've been 100 percent. well i shouldn't say 100 percent because i've been working on all of the different things that i said um but when we get that to mainnet uh we really should have a bridge to something that isn't just the value being created on the various network. We really think it's important for us to have that. So, um, because what that enables is whether or not you can be excited about all that Varus has in it, um, you can just use it because it's better, the money of whatever kind you want. And that's really just kind of impossible to, that's when, when I believe um, the real usage comes is when it's just available for use with value. You don't have to argue about what the currency is that's more important or better. You don't have to, it's just, it works and it works better for, for a lot of things that people obviously do and want to do. And I think the key to that is to make sure <clears throat> that value in whatever form as currencies can go in and out of the various ecosystem and so that's you know that's been my focus um getting these different things done it's a combination of, of you know, making sure that we have DeFi, making sure that we have a bridge whether that like before DeFi is released to mainnet i think we need to have a bridge the bridge could be um, the bridge to ethereum which it it is much closer it's closer than it was um it still needs work and I'm talking right now to a Solidity developer. If people know really good Solidity developers, it's kind of it's kind of hard to find Solidity developers who are also uh, people who understand how you know cross-chain proofs can work and this kind of thing. Um, so definitely, we're looking in a little bit of a rarefied space. But if you know some hardcore Solidity developers, um, send them my way. Otherwise, you know, we're gonna, going to get that working um, and done and in a shape that it can be audited and, and recognized as being, you know, rock solid, but um, it's just, a, that's going to take whatever time it takes. Meanwhile, I'm focused right now on getting the, uh, the DeFi and uh, cross-chain technology that will be required any of these um, to be hardened 
enough be released on mainnet as soon as possible. And then, you know, I know um, Michael Toot Jr. is right now pretty focused on the extension. I know, I don't know, a uh, number of people, just, just to let you know, and I don't want to say who, and but some people actually, both in development and um, in other support functions, you know, through this recent kind of month, month and a half period, that got COVID and were slowed down, um, some more than others, some, you know, still a bit slowed down. So um, there was a little bit of an impact there too. Uh, and then aside from that, you know, we're working on, uh, we've got this release. So upcoming release will reset testnet. And it's one of the reasons that, you know, I've been so focused on making sure that we get as much of this new hardening functionality on and onto testnet because more of this we can have on testnet, the less chance of any kind of a reset before we release mainnet, which is a goal. It's not a requirement, but it's a goal because it's more efficient and we can do more with less work. So um, we do have a release that when we get back around with everybody able to test and and do the different things to get this going, you know, there's hardening on the ETH contracts and in the um, in the bridge keeper. And either I have time to go back and debug some of that hardening because we did, and it's, it's likely not really that significant, but I do either need to go back and debug that hardening or we've also already verified that we can just revert some of the hardening that I put in there, leave it for more um, test debugging and roll out this release for the test net reset um, I'm just kind of waiting for some people to really fully recover from a fairly difficult bout of, uh, of COVID. And when they do, then um, we'll be able to uh, just make the decision on that. Because my preference would be to fix the issues, um, get the hardening moving forward closer to mainnet on the ETH bridge. And, uh, you know, there is an easy decision to make, which is, Let's just shoot for this release. Let's get it, um, you know, ready in the next few days because it's the current release that we have, which includes the PLS private connections. It includes um, a lot of the main net level hardening for test net. It includes some, actually, it includes some efficiency performance improvements for uh, building blocks and and um, solo mining could improve in speed to some degree. Um, it's got all of the, you know, auto bootstrap and, and these features that are also supported in the wallet. The GUI wallet has a, a backup now, a backup and restore button, these kinds of things. Um, there are some nice features in this release, and so we'll make a decision in the next few days if we're going to have that released with the Ethereum contracts hardening support or without and it will be a test net reset when it's released and then we'll move forward from there um but you know one thing that we didn't want to do was do a release reset test net and then still have work to do to bring up the ethereum bridge again um i mean that that is an option but it kind of puts pressure on everyone in a way that might not be ideally what we want to do to just get all of the technologies ready for mainnet. But that is the focus right now is to get the DeFi and you know it's an unknown. So so the DeFi, yes, that's close enough, hardened enough. That isn't far from mainnet, the multi-currency DeFi. The questions are what are the liquidity bridges or bridge that we're going to want to have when we do that release? Um, what are the user experiences that we're going to have, which actually isn't going to block us because as people who have built platforms understand, 
you know, you got to get the capabilities before you layer the user experiences over them. And, you know, there's a lot of push to, you know, have user experiences like you see in, in Ethereum. But the reason that that is kind of a slap together house of cards, and sorry to call it that, but that's a, what I think it is, is that it's all about user experiences without any fundamental technology underneath beyond just links and, and, um, and just the ability that, yes, we can make a user experience that looks like something, but it's not necessarily truly decentralized. It doesn't necessarily truly scale. It doesn't have, it's not thought through, but we'll get to that later. And, you know, so what we're doing is making sure that the technologies are there and we're not going to hold as we never have, not going to hold releasing. Like we didn't, we didn't wait to release the marketplace technology until someone with enough vision realized that they could build a marketplace website on top of it, even if they were waiting for the web extension. We didn't wait for that. Um, and we won't wait if we have liquidity, which is money, and a connection to the DeFi technologies. We're not going to wait. And when we turn that on, um, yes, we will hopefully have, you know, the web extension user experience with login and, and all of these things that everyone's going to be able to build applications with. And we hopefully will see a boom of applications that leverage these technologies because those are extremely valuable technologies. And the people who were able to kind of see things early will benefit. And otherwise, you know, we, we are likely to get very busy, I would think. And not the way we've been in building the platform, but busy in just helping people build their applications. And um, so right now, the unknown is, okay, we know that we want to have an easier or lower cost model for IDs, but we, we don't know for sure. Although, you know, the PBAS and the cross chain uh, work is in fact, um, pretty well hardened. And, you know, it's getting further along. Um, to the point where I think it would be very reasonable to start looking at offering, you know, test net level bounties that give motivation for people to really try and get through any of the cross chain or any of these things. But we're not quite there yet. It's going to be a release to test net or maybe one or two more, but we're, we're close. And, um, you know, there is some question about launching a PS chain and there, there's some question around um, hardening that first launch step. But aside from that, pr things are quite solid. Um, on the same chain, multi-currency DeFi, those, those are quite solid on the all of the AMMs and the multi-currency baskets. Those are quite solid. You know, and then the question is, um, what are we going to have? Are we going to really just change what, what we said and say, oh, okay, EBAS is hardened enough and we will actually, you know, get it out. Um, but even if we do something like that, I think it's pretty clear that we want at least fractional currencies or centralized currencies to be able to issue IDs. and. So right now, you know, that's likely, there's kind of a question. We need IDs to be less expensive than the IDs that are on mainnet. Right now, the IDs that will be less expensive, they won't be able to launch currencies because they're, they're either going to be coming off of a PBAS chain, which I think that we need another form of ID, which comes off of, you know, uh, a centralized currency or a fractional currency. Because the economic model is quite, it's actually quite easy in some of the stuff that I'm doing now for the cross chain um, fee conversions and fee solution, which was one of the last pieces needed for hardening. And it's also one of the pieces that still needs to be finished inside of the Ethereum contracts because it wasn't done by the people who were going to do that. Um, and so, but it is. Uh, being completed on all of the cross PBAS chains. And it also allows a kind of a, a fee model for things like, you know, IDs, 
and registering IDs on currencies. So there are some interesting capabilities that this could enable that wouldn't take long to make available that could allow, for example, if I wanted to make a branded line of NFTs, I take my ID, I create some kind of a, whether it's a centralized currency or a, a fractional currency that I use that people need to pay to buy my, um, you know, my NFTs. Uh, and I make it so that once I've done that, that people can then register either with or without my approval identities through that currency that can be less expensive than the identities that are on mainnet now, but that have, you know, dot the name of that currency after the identity name, like a sub domain type name. And also, um, they're not going to be able to start their own currencies and they're not going to be able to start their own chains. And there is a really valid, you know, protocol based reason for that limitation. So it all kind of fits. Um, and then each chain, including Varus, and I think we would want to keep our, our fee on this low, um, would define the identity import fee and the currency import fee, which would then be respected by these cross chain, um, imports and, and everything. And so I kind of, I, I think I've rambled a little bit on this, uh, this capability, but I, th but I want it. I want people to understand why we're doing these different things to the point where we can all help, you know, in cases where it's, it's unclear on what we believe we should do. So, you know, for example, um, I'm releasing this EFI technology to mainnet the first time with multi-currency and everything else. It's, I, I have a couple of opinions about what it should have to be released. Num you know, in an abstract sense, number one, I think we need a way, I think we, it's not a need, but it's a really strong um, support for this release to mainnet. And I think it's, it's important, it's very important. So in a sense, I would say it's a need, but people can say what they think on this. I think we basically need a model who have IDs to get involved in being able to issue less expensive IDs. That's one thing. Um, I think that we need a connection to liquidity. Actually, you know, aside from multi-currency DeFi and liquidity baskets, I think those are the two most important kind of requirements. And of course, we want to get the web extension, the user experiences, you know, the login server, I'd really like to see that done because it's just been kind of sitting in a, a state near done, but not done for a long time. So, um, you know, I'd love to see that. Uh, I want to see a number of things done, but the, um, I think those are the two pieces that I believe we need. You know, of course, it's a given that everything must be hardened absolutely hardened and ready for main that that's just a given but the two capabilities i believe we need one was going to be solved by but isn't quite yet solved by the hardened main net ready ethereum bridge could also be solved by a main net ready um centralized bridge even if it were a good enough one but basically i believe that we, and, and it could also be solved by a project that has some kind of real liquidity and ethereum compatibility and developers who want to do who want to help excuse me <clears throat> so uh, just a moment so um <clears throat> you know my focus now is then to get we've already done a lot of work to enable the uh, and i've done a lot of work to enable the light mode model to be more efficient and more quickly expose all of our smart transaction functionality there's still some more work to be done there. Um, the web extension, the now I'm focused on the core technologies, including you know everything that's going to be on testnet as well as everything that's going to be on mainnet, being hardened and ready to stand up to a public permissionless mainnet environment, and, uh, and that's 
where my focus is right now. But as I'm doing that, um, that work kind of intersects a little bit with how we will register sub IDs. And so I expect to do that either partially opportunistically or um, after this is done, but I don't expect that to take too long. And then, um, you know, some basically, if we don't get another answer for liquidity, then I think, you know, the, or, or say Matic wanting to help and have liquidity on their network first versus, you know, Ethereum. Um, then, then I think that we're, we're going to need to have some form of liquidity, I believe before we will want to release this. I feel like it's, um, we should get it hardened. We should be testing it. We should be pounding on it and we should be working as hard as we can to get either centralized, you know, fiat liquidity connected and in, like multi-currency would be best, or decentralized Ethereum or other bridges in place, and then release mainnet. And that's what I think the focus should be. And I don't believe that the um, ID registration for sub IDs is going to be a critical, like a, it's not going to be a long pull. I'm I'm critical path, I know, in development, but uh, that's not going to be, you know, a hard thing that's going to take a long time to get finished. Um, I don't think it could, I don't believe that it would take longer than, you know, an extra week on top of whatever else is going on. So that's kind of where things are. I think that was a, a pretty complete picture. I know I didn't summarize it very well. Um, I can take a few questions, but then I did actually spend longer than I expected talking about it, went into more detail. Um, and so I should drop off and, and get back to work on things. You know, but I, I can take a few questions if people have them. Well, I don't see any questions appear and I don't see anyone uh, changing his uh, microphone. So All right. Uh, I can say thank you very much for this overview, and I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to listen uh, back a couple of times for this one. All right. Well, thanks. I, I hope I didn't just lose everybody or, you know, just ramble and lose everybody. I hope that was useful to some people, hopefully more than just a couple, but. Um... Uh, well, you didn't lose me, and it's enough uh, to, to uh, make some kind of uh, uh, structured overview from it. Let me put it that way. So right, it'll right. probably end up in the uh, in the monthly newsletter as well. All right, yeah, great. good update. Definitely good update. And thanks for updating us uh, with so much detail. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And uh, happy new year. And let's make this a great one. So thank you.